Welcome back to the nation's capital. Before we pack things up and head back to Phoenix, we wanted to take you behind the scenes here and what it's been like at 12 News with the passing of Senator John McCain, a man who had such an impact on all of our lives for those especially who have covered him and even those who didn't. Everyone knew Senator John McCain in the 12 Newsroom. This is Impact. I remember as a kid, my dad taking me to see John Kennedy's funeral procession in 1963 and then waiting in line it was freezing cold waiting in line and then walking in the Capitol Rotunda in the US and seeing this flag draped coffin and um, not really understanding the significance of it but I I knew that my parents had been crying all day after seeing uh, John Kennedy's funeral procession and and I, I sort of had this weird deja vu today that um, this, this was the quintessential American hero who's gone. Bram Resnick calmly walked into the newsroom. We're hearing the news that the senator has passed away. The moment that Rachel and I went out there, we were both ready to go and tell Senator McCain's story. This moment is just uh, overwhelming. There was an interview I did with him about three years ago, and the last question I asked him, I said, tell me something you agree with about President Obama, something you support. And, um, you know, he answered the question, and it was a very specific foreign policy issue. Um, but then when the interview ended, he, I will always remember, he came up and said, I really like that last question. And I think that says a lot about John McCain. He appreciated efforts to try to find common ground. It was the moment at the state capitol when John McCain's hearse pulled up, and I'm getting chills just saying it now, uh, and Cindy McCain with Sun Jack in his dress, navy whites, holding one arm, one elbow, and Jimmy McCain in his dress, marine uniform, holding the other elbow as her husband's coffin was pulled out of the hearse. That tableau is something I will never forget. We report on it all the time. Families dealing with crisis, families dealing with a tragedy, and it's always tough to watch. But America has come to know this family. They know the McCains. They know Cindy McCain because she's been on John McCain's arm for so long. They know Meghan McCain because of her TV show and she's very outspoken and like her father not afraid to to speak her mind and to see them collectively grieving as a family was just heartbreaking it was it was gut-wrenching to watch that it's like watching you know a 32 year old grown woman just become a little girl all over again and that was really sad because no one wants to think about losing their parent and you kind of draw on your own experiences, like my mother just passed away not too long ago, so you, you sort of feel that. When the plane took off, when, I think just, to, oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry again. Um, I think that moment of the finality of all of it, that he like really was leaving Arizona and he was, we weren't gonna have him here anymore. A lot of us, going through the death of a loved one, we get to do it in private. And, you know, it's hard enough to do it in private. But to see the McCain family um, do it in public, um, that's, that part has really touched me. As a daughter to um, a, a police officer who serves our community, just as John McCain did as a politician, it's hard to think about that day and to see her hold her stomach and hold her heart and fight back tears at his services. It's just, it's so real. We all cried during the memorial service at the Baptist Church, all three of us. I was crying, Emma was crying, our guest, the Arizona State Historian, Marshall Tribble was crying. Um, memorial services in general make us feel our own humanity but when it's somebody who's lived such a rich and fulfilling life 
It makes you reflect upon your own experiences and maybe your own shortcomings. Maybe that's what we're all crying about is that we'll always pale in comparison to the shadow that John McCain cast upon our state and upon our country. How many people can say that they have lived his life? I mean, being a POW uh, in confinement for five and a half years, which I think most of us couldn't even begin to imagine, but that didn't break him. If anything, it, it inspired him. That's the sign of incredible bravery that I think we'd all aspire to. But when the chips are down, could we, would we really be that brave? I don't know. I really don't know. When my family came here with nothing, uh, somebody like John McCain, who understands the plight of Vietnamese, what it's like to come here to a foreign country, not have anything, not know anybody, for him to be that ambassador and to help this community when they need it the most, you know, it's it's truly a sad day. It's a sad time for the Vietnamese community. I know that because of what he went through, five and a half years as a prisoner of war in Vietnam, but yet he still managed to forgive. And he just sensed that this was someone who understood this broader context that we're all in this together. How many decent men are left on Capitol Hill? Um, all of them, politicians to be sure, they all want to win, they'll do what they need to do, they'll shake the hands they need to shake. But somewhere, when they look in the mirror at night, they either know they're a decent person or they're not. And I guarantee you that John McCain, when he looked in the mirror at night, could go to sleep peacefully knowing that he always did the right thing, and if he didn't, he admitted it. And I would be lying, guys, if I didn't say how much I will miss the senator, uh, his presence, the way he treated the media, how good he was to Arizona, and especially how he always put country before party. Joe and Rachel, we'll toss it back to you, and we'll see you back in the Valley in a couple of days.